I wonder if anyone's doing landscape photography with a 200 to 600 mil lens. Probably not. That would be ridiculous. This is the Sony 200 to 600 mil G lens. A lens definitely not suited for landscape photography. I'm not sure why I even bought it. It's a lens designed for people shooting wildlife, birders, people doing sport. I don't do any of that. I bought it on the off chance that I could use it up in the mountains and quickly discovered that it was a pain in the ass to do so. It's very susceptible to wind. It's just not something that you want to go climbing mountains with. But I thought I'd give it a go at some landscape photography today, as stupid as that sounds. I'm in my local hills and I'm going to wander around with it on this Benro Tortoise tripod for the first time. I made a separate review video of this. I'm hoping it's going to be suitable for this big old lens. The lens is so big, hey, easy, that it becomes uh, a case of putting your lens on your tripod rather than putting your camera on your tripod. Anyway, we're going to give this, throw my stuff around everywhere, bloody hell. We're going to give this a whirl, doing a bit of landscape photography up in the Clent Hills and see how we get on. The first shot we'll go for, rather predictably, is something on the skyline. This is Birmingham city centre in the distance, about 12 miles away, I think. Feels pretty good on this tripod. It's the Benro 35C Tortoise tripod. It's carbon fibre and the camera and lens weigh twice as much as the tripod, I think. This comes in at just under two kilos. I think this 200 to 600 mil lens is just over two kilos on its own. But it feels pretty good. It doesn't feel too top heavy. And the first shot we'll go for is of the Birmingham city skyline. We have the BT tower on the left, city center in the middle, and some fields, layers of countryside in the foreground, which is quite unusual. We'll go F9, a nice fast shutter speed. We'll go for one, one thousandth, and ISO 400. Image stabilization is on, and we'll use a two second timer. And look at that, bird flying through shots. Try and get that. Not a bad image. One of the most difficult things using this lens is gonna be the wind, as I found out previously. I'm on the summit of the Clent Hills on a windy day, 20 to 30 mile an hour winds. I'm currently zoomed in at 600 mil onto the Witchbury Monument two or three miles in the distance there. I'm using my two second timer again, and I'm gonna wait for a lull in the wind and a point where the monument is lit up. So we have fast passing clouds, a little bit of light coming on it there, so we'll go for that. Two seconds, there's no lull in the wind. I'm not sure if I got that or not. Not quite, just missed the light. So I'm gonna wait for a lull in the wind Use a nice fast shutter speed. We'll go for one two thousandth of a second, F9. That'll give us ISO 1600 for a daylight shot, but I think that's the best way of dealing with it in windy conditions. 
a little bit of light there, but also wind again. All fun and games, isn't it? I think that is as good as we're going to get. I'll quit with that shot for now and I'll move around the hills and try and find somewhere a little bit more secluded. And for something a little bit different and to show off the aperture and the depth of field on this lens, I've just spotted a bench about 75 metres away. I'm going to go wide open at 600 mil. That's f 6.3 and take a shot of that. really have picked the wrong day for this. There are many secluded spots up here. It's about to piss it down a rain. It's getting very windy and the light is few and far between. What I was planning to do is come up onto the hill, follow the pools of light across the landscape. But at the moment, the only thing lit up is this series of flats, Briley Hill flats a few miles away. So we'll get a few shots of those. I've got to admit, I'm finding this whole thing a little bit difficult. I've just spent half an hour wandering through the valley on the other side of the hills, trying to get out of this wind. Um, whenever you drop down, the wind eases a little bit and you lose the horizon. And the horizon's the, the beauty of being out with this lens, being able to sit there and pick off targets in the distance. That's difficult today. I've just come back to the summit and I thought I'd relate those two shots that we got earlier, the stones and the flats. I can relate them both in one shot at just over 200 mil. We'll go for F16 for a nice big depth of field. It gives us 160th with an ISO of 100. So we'll crank the ISO up to a thousand. Wait for the light, which is there now, and take the shot. Not bad, but I'm gonna try and find something better to put the 600 mil to a test. Look at this, this is a folly. Do you know what a folly is? It's what people used to spend their money on before Ferraris existed. Rich people in days gone by had nowhere better to spend their money than build fake castles and stand in stones. Overall then, a frustrating but quite fun little experiment. This tripod has been fantastic by the way. It's the Benro Tortoise 35C, just two kilos, much lighter than this and never once did I feel like it was going to blow over in what were quite strong winds at times. I'll stick a link to that in the description as well. But a very fun experiment. Do you want to use this for landscape photography? Yeah, probably not. Although that shot I got of the stones related to the town behind with the compression was really quite nice and I don't think I would have been able to get that otherwise. So it's a big old thing to carry around and uh, I don't know, depends how useful it's going to be. Could be quite fun, could just be a pain in the ass. Look at the size of it barely fits in my bag. I've got plans to stick that in a gimbal 
for a stabilised shaft. Maybe I'll wander around handheld. Could be quite interesting. Watch this space. That's it. Thanks for watching. Out.